Purely versus Zodiac. Cash Tira is here in the top eight plus grand finale and the top deck list is here. Watching as long as you can, I greatly appreciate that. Liking, commenting, subscribing. With that said, Hajime. There can only be one winner. And you're looking at it. Let's go. Max C being ditched early in the standby phase. We got the tanky grabbing our Thoroughblade. Thoroughblade on summon, discard a Zodiac to draw a card here. And now making our Mommy Dryden. Dryden's got the quick effect to pop a card on the fields. And it does not, it has to be face up. So we're going to imperm to negate it preemptively to protect our cards from being destroyed from the Dryden. Now, Droplet's a card we have rarely been seeing lately. It's quite popular in the TCG ever since Arise Heart was banned, but we don't really have as much room for a card like Droplet because not only do we have to put in Max C, then you have to put in cards that counter Max C, thus resulting in less diversity among the tech cards that we choose to play in our decks. That is going to be ending our turn there off of that massive droplet play. Borbo to go into the Zeus play. This is it. Attack directly and then stack up the materials to give us a fat Zeus. Per two materials, we can wipe the field that many times. So how fat is the Zeus? We can make it six material. We could do triple field wipe Zeus. Is that the way? Check a nine. Check a nine into Zeus. Where's the materials at? Six material triple field wipe Zeus, not setting the droplet so that we don't wipe out our own cards. You have to carefully at the start of the battle phase with your toggle on. So you got to toggle on at the start of the turn to be safer. Without toggle on, believe it or not, you would lose your Zeus. It would attack, it would banish, and the game's not going to help you. With your toggle on auto, it's a Konami assistant tapping your shoulder on when they think you want to activate your effects, not when you should. And you should toggle on, start the battle phase. You have to have the battle phase details turned on also. Let's go. All right, all right. You actually don't need it turned on, but it, you know, it's nice to see. Two more field wipes left. We're not going to further commit to the... Well, we are. So we're going to drop it first then double field wipe Zeus. So you might be thinking, why commit now when he did not commit earlier? This is playing around in permanence. It's good foresight. You want to play around counter cards. You don't want to just focus on your wombo combos, then pass. Then rear on the attack. We are going to droplet, not only negate, but reduce the attack. You cannot call off the attack. You're committing to the attack and you're now negated. Very well done. Taking that 1800 damage, dropping us down to 2k left. Main phase two, pretty memory. The small detail, but summoning the Lily in the battle phase would play around Valor. That's okay though. Ash is going to be negating the Lily, not waiting for the My Friend to negate that. We are going to be attempting to exceed. Zeus is going to be sending the Lily to the graveyard, stopping the hard once per turn exceed play. Could follow up happy memory making the Zeus indestructible Lily randomly add a card off the top three of our deck we got something to add we're grabbing the happy memory not the my friend we're going to be revealing the happy memory not Zeus wiping it happy is now here but what can we really do with it we could uh we could have made a Zeus yeah by by not waiting we could have just straight up overlaid Zeus and we didn't want that to happen Magna Hut banishing the Lily and just like that taking this into a game two. What is good? A deck like Zodiac has so much room for hand traps and techs. You could make about two thirds of your deck techs. And that's what's really fun about Zodiac. Bun back in the day on release of Mastodol was playing Zodiac. So Bun is very happy to be playing the updated version. Purely completely ending their turn off of a single Ash. Zodiac Barrage attempting to summon from the deck. We have Ash Negate. It only then now follow up with the Pot of D, potentially banishing some important cards here. Let's see. Off the top of the deck we go. It looks like we lost double Unicorn, Solemn Judgment. I mean, we are teched out the wazoo. Our limited one Rat Pier is now gone. Purely my friend. Add randomly one of the three semi-limited delicious 66% chance being added to the hand. We're now going to be summoning our Lily. When do we rip out the dro droplet? 
Our special summon monster could not be targeted, but this is a non-target negate, playing around the purely street protection. Very nice. Now, where do we go from here? It is negated for the full turn here, making Princess Sprite into Zeus. That's what is what I'm guessing. Detach, mill the top card unless it's a spell or trap, add it to the hand. Now, you can't make Zeus unless you battle with your Exceed, so if we summon our monster in attack position, you're in trouble. Magna activating on summon, ending the turn. Oh, this is devastating for Purely. Another Zodiac Barrage, plus even more techs. We got Ghost Spell, Bistial, Droplet. We have so much protecting our Dryden Mommy. Trying to get poppin', taking out the street, leaving up the My Friend Purely. That's interesting. We have the Chacanine detaching, reborning from the graveyard. Come forth, we got Ram Ram. Ram Ram when destroyed, special summon a monster from the graveyard. We got Dryden back in the field. That Dryden can activate again if it gains a material through the Tiger Mortar. Big enough of Magna Hut, wiping out the Princess Sprite. Tiger Mortar it up. Detach, equip onto the Dryden. You know, we may be making a utopic Draco future though. Possibly, are we? I don't think so. Maybe we leave up the Dryden and don't do it. We bore bone, are we making a big Zeus? Huge Zeus plus an activatable Dryden is here. Wait, that's not that big. One field wipe. One field wipe, one pop, one negate, bestial, and go spell. I mean, we're in trouble. Pop a Dryden, MST negates, don't forget it. Negate and pop with the Dryden. Dead, my friend. Dead, Maxi. Dead, purely. To battle we go. Big enough to take out the Dryden. Giving the fourth material onto Zeus. It's not a misplay. We're just scooping. We're having fun with the rest of the duel here, okay? Now we're out of here. Thank you, Lemon. Thank you, Bun, for putting on a great show. I appreciate both of you. Let's keep on going. Pot of D, getting that draw too. Did we lose anything valuable here like our Protos? Sword Soul never banishes Protos randomly. I don't get it. Grand Master is here. We're going to be channeling blocking with the Mo Yi so the Ash does not negate. You would be Ash in the Pot of D though. Mo Yi with that random draw. We already used up our normal summon. We got Long Yun, discard, searching for the Protos. Now, Dragon Link can't special summon Dark. What does that do to Dragon Link? It does a lot. Let's filter by the Dragon Link deck type, Dragon Link, Dragon L, and let's type in Dark. It will sort by the most popular Dark monsters that cannot be special summoned. Can't special, Serenir, Tracer, Striker, Collapse Serpent, Absa Router, Recharger, Jerusalem, Magna Hut, can't Boral Load, can't Chaos Ruler, can't Pisty, can't Pater, can't triple burst, can't Borlin, can't Levineer. I think you get it that they pretty much can't do anything. We'll see. We have a monster negate and an omni negate on top of that also. It's just not fair. This Protos is not fair. It's not even that Sword Soul is super top tier. It's not even that prevalent. It's not that popular. It's just unfair. Okay, good job. You Protos me. Protos declared dark, special summon before we can't summon our dark. Let's go. The next big leaks will be on Sunday stream, 31st, New Year's Eve. I know you're gonna be with me. You're not gonna be out with friends and drinking. You're gonna be here for the leak. Lethal damage. All right, into game two. What do we have here? We have Dragon Link breaking, ain't no way! Trash deck, am I right? Finger the ash, and I'll finger your C. Yup, you can't finger me without me fingering you back. And now, we are going to be popping off. Let's do it. Do we Grandmaster banish the trap, summon a token? I think that's the play, right? Discard Vishuda after summoning Shathana? Yeah? Yeah! That's the way! We know the play. Jurasworm getting rid of that Vishuda, which we could pop your Jurasworm with a Baron to Floor. 
You try to send, we could negate. Yup, yup, yup. Nope. Huh? So I, uh, so I, I just want to show you that, uh, you know, I'm not saying he misplayed. He could do other plays here, but you, Grandmaster, banish the trap, summon a token, and then you have the Baron to floor also. Burn for 1200. Let's link this off into our Monk of Ten Yi. Let's Heavenly Dragon Circle to Sword Soul Taya, and we good. We still got plays. Because we have the Heavenly Dragon Circle, had we not had it, what I said would be a very good option. Grand Master is here. We are searching. We already. We didn't emergence into Protoss yet. Nope. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Yes. Protoss Gaming. Protoss is top tier. Sword Soul is okay also. Banishing three. Dark monsters are illegal. Negate. And then we have 8,300 for a game. Just like that. Very well done. And let's finish him. GOT may key with his Proto deck advancing into the top four. Oh, you know, you play around the gamma, you get Fen reared. What's the way? What is the play? Imperm negate that Lily. I don't think so. And because we waited with Max C, if we end up activating it, we now played into TTT, played into Fen rear, but we didn't Max C at all. Okay. Very well done. Maxi, we could now thrust. We could thrust a branded fusion into our hand. Could chain branded opening to the Maxi so that we do not give them a draw off of that special summon. What do we thrust for? What's the thrust gonna be good for? Sending from the deck for Albion Sanctifier. Give just one draw to summon it. Nadir Servant is going to be giving us a Quem that we could normal summon. To battle, we go first. Huh? Why didn't we summon Quem Swing over the Lily? We want to leave th this up. Play around Imperm, maybe. Uh, play around the Fenrir in the hand that they added that we did see them add. Yep. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yes. Nice. Nice. Fusion prediction copying branded fusion to send the puppet from the deck to the grave. This is not balanced. Quem is gonna reborn the Albaz, Lubalian is gonna discard Diffuse, and we're waiting with the Sanctifier Dragon to completely puppet lock them out of making any plays. The puppet does not activate. It just on summon, it continuously just right then and there applies its effect. It is cheating. Even if you had impermanence, Sanctifier can't be targeted. Can't target with the Imperm. So we did block the Fenrir also. And just like that, you could not special summon any monsters for the rest of the turn. What do? You scoop. You get Puppet locked, you're done. Reveal three, come to me. The problem is if you ban Puppet, they can then summon something else. They could summon the Ido. They could summon the light one, the raw, the winged dragon of raw one that says uh, you can't special summon. There's surprisingly quite a few of these monsters that you could summon on their field to lock them out. Send the Garura, draw a card here. Triple tactics talent in main phase two. Come to me, draw two. We have thrust, thrusting into a pot of pee. <laughs> Jalgen? We have Cartesia during the end phase, adding back to the hand because a fusion monster was sent to the grave this turn. We have Linatus adding a fusion deployment from the deck to the hand. Damn. It is time to get thrust in. To battle we go, 1800 to the face. The Mirror Jade already activated, so it's not gonna be activatable again. We're gonna use Branded Banishment, reborning the Quem, and then fusing with either side of the field. We could fuse with that purely if we want to, and that's exactly what we're doing to make Quiritus. Over 14,000 damage on the field. Finish off this purely fool. No damage on the first attack. Surely we still have game. And just like that, taking this into game two. Who's rooting for the puppet lock against purely? You are disgusting. Max, see it up in the standby phase. Wanted to play around the Fenrir. Come forth and summon that Lily. 
Lily is here. Come to me, my friend Purely. We do have Sarah near, which is not good disruption against Purely. Let's speed this up. Got branded opening. That could be Alibur. It could be Quem. We could search for branded fusion. We could send a Albaz card from the deck to the graveyard. We got Curry Kara. What the heck? There's no side deck in today's event. Where the heck did where did this come from? You're actually playing this. This punishes them if they activate Sleepy in the standby phase, which they're going to. Who would not Sleepy in the standby phase? You're going to tell me we're going to give up draw? Okay. We are opening into adding the Alibur, not summoning it because you max seed. Sure. And just like that, we can now carry Kara. You get your draw too. You got the Veiler, which you did not draw into. You just had it. We could finger the Veiler, which I do think we will. Yes, we will. Finger that Veil. This is where if we added this deal ourselves, we chain banish the Veiler to dodge the finger. Your negated Alibur will now be searching. When do we curry Kara? Branded Fusion is here. Get ready. No ash in sight. Purely is getting clapped up here. Summoning a Titan clad. Sending the Biru. What the heck just happened? Curry Kara is sending the field to the graveyard. That will trigger the Purely Street to summon a body onto the field here. 4,000 attack Titan clad thanks to the Nibiru boosting up to 4,000 attack. Lily grabbing the leap, and we, we do have game. We actually have game. Thanks to the Serenir for additional damage here. 4K, 3K, 2,500, everything can attack. Purely has been defeated by Branded Despia. Puppet lock for the first game, and a turn to lethal for game two. Very well done. We've been seeing Brandon Despia winning on turn two OTKs quite frequently today. Very powerful deck. Order to one will kill the deck. Are you serious? Are you serious? You think that? So what did we accomplish here? Monster negates. We have nothing banished, so monster destroy. We could link off with uh, maybe the opponent's field to make a big play. We also have impermanence. So monster negate, destroy, link, imperm. This deal not gonna really count as a disruption. Can we play through four disruption? Drew a swarm could possibly help with one of the disruptions here. Why, did we already dispater? Why didn't we dispater destroy? It's only if sent from the field to the grave or does it get to send a card on the field to the grave. So I feel like we missed out on that, yeah? Rykart is here, Imperm with the negates. You don't know that Rhymeheart's not in the hand. Rhymeheart could pop this, dodging the impermanence. Cause you didn't look at the hand after returning the Rhymeheart back. It's like, wow, played right into Rhymeheart. I, I just, I'm shocked. How often that's happening today. When is someone going to Rhymeheart Chain? To the damn impermanence on Rykart. We got Unicorn on, summon discard to spin a card on the field back into the deck. Goodbye to the Meek. And goodbye to the Magna Hut with the Druid Storm being sent to the grave. We still have Borland Monster Negate. We still have Dispater Destroy. Chaos Angel is uh, summoned with what? It is does not have the light protection effect. It is affected by the Borland. So Borland could just negate straight up. That's our negate. Angel is affected by that as the Rocket Tracer reborns from the graveyard. And we still have the Dispater able to just die from the Chaos Angel. So we played through everything, but we have nothing left Taking this into game number two. Max C preemptively to play around the Fenrir Sag. Side frame, gear frame, negate and destroying the Fenrir. It's funny, like you have the gear frame. Yeah, you no, know, it's okay. Yeah, you, if they gamma you, you gamma the gamma, so it's safe to early Max C anyway. It's not like you are playing right into it. 
Rhymeheart is going to be negated from adding a Monodium card. The Peaceful Planet could grab a Vsauce Starfrost, which could pop the Rhymeheart. Then we could go into the Lightheart. I mean, we're under max seed, so let's not. How about we don't? Now the Reframing does nothing because we don't control a Synchro Monster, otherwise it negates everything. So we don't really do much at all. Yep, we're just gonna get clapped. Gone forth, <laughs> zero, zero disruption, just nothing. And unfortunately, when Dragon Link has lethal, it still takes 10 to 15 minutes to set up that lethal. So you should just surrender. Send, send, search, food sector, <laughs> special, pop. Hold on, I'm gonna get there soon, just, just wait. Chaos Ruler, mill five, add a light or dark among those five. I'm still cooking. Link it up into the Pisty. We could triple burst, then reborn, banish a light and dark to summon our Chaos Ruler back on the fields. We're gonna be banishing for our Ball Drake. Link it all up into the Borland Dragon. We're still going, I've just begun. We got the Dispater special summon a banished monster. We still haven't even summoned our Chaos Ruler back. Pop ourselves, add the recharger, trigger the recharger. Uh, what, we didn't want to do that? Huh, what? Bro, what was that? You can't? What did I mess up? Not from the extra? Not on free extra, you can't? What did I, what did I say, uh, what, what did, huh? Homie draw, time limit? What do you mean can't? Why can't? Can't what? Recharger triggers only from the extra deck monster? Wait, what'd he pop? Oh, wait, he, oh, oh, he screwed up? Striker, oh, in TCG, like no one would've caught this. Recharger says that if a monster summoned from the extra deck is destroyed, only then does it trigger. And because the Striker Dragon was from the graveyard and not from the extra deck, it did not trigger. Damn. Okay. Huh, uh, good thing that you didn't surrender. But because you have a banished card, I can negate the Rhymeheart. Rhymeheart negates, and let's see where we can go from here. We do have Borland negate still. Okay. Yep. Yeah, uh, oh, okay. Uh, Vsauce actually can't pop Rhymeheart. There's so many things you just can't do because uh, there's so many restrictions. <laughs> it, the v, Let me read Vsauce. It says it has to be different type and attribute. Let's just put it on the screen here. Vsauce cannot pop it because, uh, yeah, yeah, you got to pay attention to people cheating. Target a monster with a different type and attribute. This is a warrior. It's a light, and the Rhymeheart is a light warrior, so that doesn't even work. How awesome is that? Huh? Isn't Ecclesia Mo Yi a play? Yeah, what happened? Okay. Uh, it happened. It just happened. Something happened. All right, we are max seeing in the standby phase. <laughs> yeah, nothing. What, what do you mean Mo Yi can't reveal Ecclesia? I've done that so many times. Unicorn on attack, goodbye to the Grandmaster. I think the deck plays two though, right? We play more than one, Great. yup, yup, yup. More than one Grandmaster, definitely. Third Blade on Summon, discard a Zodiac, draw a card, making our Dryden's. Dryden's gonna be able to quick effect, pop a face-up card in the field. Unfortunately, we had to deal with Max C, giving him two free draws off of that. Now we go on Ecclesia into the Mo Yi. Mo Yi reveal the Long Yun. Unicorn for the second Grandmaster, that's it. Grandmaster on our turn, your turn. No Grandmaster for you. Which we actually, in a way, kind of need because the Long Yun has nothing to discard unless we add with the Heavenly Dragon Circle. Very nicely done. Whatever Dryden is targeting, that is what we're gonna be tributing. We still have that normal summon. Taya Banish, give us that token. We can now make a Baxia. Baxi has a double spin with Taya. It's a spin one with Mo Yi. Taya sending from the deck to the graveyard a card that we could reborn with the Baxia. Very nicely done. Baxia, pop our call by the grave. 
to add back, I should say, summon the Tenyu onto the field. The card we are popping is going to finger the bell, stopping the resummon. Very interesting. Finger the bell, Baxia pop the finger, and then reborn from the graveyard, our Adhara. Adhara is going to be linking into a non-effect monster, so we can now use the Adhara to add back to discard with Long Yun. Very well done. Discard that Mo Yi. See, we're recovering after that turn one like night. <laughs> Damn. We summoned Mo Yi past turn one, and we still won. Because of Maxi, right? Maxi. Special summon the fan rear rat peer sending a ram ram from the deck here. This is a one card UDF monster negates. Do we do that? It's a lot of special summons, but there's no max C, so we're fine. We are going to be reborning the ram ram. Now we got the Zodiac Dryden. You got to pop the ram ram because it has a restriction of you can't exceed with the monster reborn with the Chakanine. So you instead resummon the Chakanine with the ram ram being destroyed. And now you make a Tiger Mortar, you attach a material onto the Chakanine, Chakanine reborn a monster from the graveyard, and we keep on going. Dryden's also activatable again if you want to do that. Come forth back onto the fields. And then we are going to be UDFing and with no material under the Dryden. UDF it up, get ready. Now we have Zodiac Barrage. Barrage is going to be popping itself, summoning a Whiptail. Whiptail can equip onto the Dryden. The Barrage could also equip onto the Dryden. Very well done. And we're no longer negated. Monster Negate, pop a face up, banish a face up, negate a summon spell or trap, does not negate a monster effect. Let's go. Can't negate that. Actually can't negate that, but Fenrir could banish that. And we could chain tribute that to search our deck. Ashuna is going to, we're going to be Ash Blossoming the Heavenly Dragon Circle. And Cross Out Designate is going to negate the Ash from negating the Heavenly Dragon Circle, from adding a worm to our hand that we could normal summon or special. We got Vashuda to the hand. Very well done. We still have not used the other effect of Ashuna. We have to have a non-effect monster in the field here by special summoning the Vashuda going into the Monk. We now have a non-effect monster. And with that, we really want to get rid of it before the Vashuda spins a card we control back to the hand, before the Ashuna special summons a monster from the deck. Now, by taking out the Monk, we're going to follow up Adhara to make a Monk again. Let's go. No, you're not. I'm going to negate. Negate and take control if it were to be on the field. Adhara could be normal summon. I mean, we could Mohi reveal token with the token we can then activate Vashuda and uh, the Ashuna Ashuna and Vashuda but solemn judgment negate the summon I think this is where we do it yes we do of course we do it negate oh uh, we have emergence and a long yun how are we still cooking what the heck we got uh, yeah, uh, solemn Fenrir UDF Dryden or disruptions they're all done, and we're still cooking. Big cooking. We could Grandmaster banish the trap. We could make Grandmaster and Baron to floor spin back the absolutely indestructible UDF. GOT Makey is cooking. Damn. As you can see, Makey knows what he's doing. I, you know, I think what happened game one of this match was just a, a, a mishap. It randomly happens sometimes. That's fine. It, well, we're locked into worm-type monsters because the Ashuna, so not bearing to floor. Hot damn. So what's interesting here is the Whip Tail. If the Exceed battles with an opponent's monster after damage calculation, banish that opponent's monster. And the Dryden is not negated. So yeah, it, it gives the Exceed the effect. Goodbye to the Grandmaster. Very well done. If a card gets banished, the Grandmaster will activate a banished card in the field and in the graveyard. Theosis. Okay, we could search, we could target, we could summon. We're not banishing yet. I mean, what if we big eye take control of that, right? Rise Heart? Don't banish Rise Heart. Don't what? Okay. Trigger the Chang Ying. I mean, we have three level seven, so it's not that big of a deal. Unicorn, look at the extra deck getting rid of, I think, the last monk. And we're making a Shang read. Do we not have a big eye? Maybe we don't have room. We don't have big eye. No big eye. Ain't no way. 
Shangri summoning from the deck. Unicorn here. Long Yon discard summon. <laughs> Was this hard drawn Long Yon twice? Right? He like opened up Long Yon? Or, you know, he hard opened up the emergence, to be fair. But that other Long Yon, where the heck did that come from? Ain't no freaking way. He just drew it off the top of the deck. Semi limited. One Long Yon left. Damn. All right. Speaking of Dragon Link, we have Branded Despia with the Maximus tech. I love this tech. Send Titan clad Albion, summon a Quem, and set up a Branded uh, Fusion Banishment Red or add an opening. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Brand regained. We are going to. Uh, do we have Linatus? Linate we got Linatus. We got Contact Fuse with the entire field of dragons. Borlode, Dispater, Borland, set the Albaz, and then just grab your opponent's cards and toss them in the grave. They could respond to your set, but what? How are they responding to a set? They're gonna Mascarina, maybe? Actually, yeah. They set, you Mascarina, spin the set. But, like, no one's gonna do that. They're not gonna do that. They should though, they should see it coming because he's been doing it in the tournament today. And we also have Super Poly on top of that. Let's speed this up. All right, <laughs> oh my God. Return back the Albaz. Dragon, 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 dragon. Five dragons, put all five dragons into the grave. Now, don't activate, just I set, I send to the grave. Oh my gosh. No, 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 see, we got Mascarina. We got it. We have to toggle on. Toggle on. It will not ask you to Mascarina on a set. It's not going to. <laughs> You toggle on Unicorn Spin, right? You got to. I mean, if they're setting and you know Apple Mod, you know Apple Mod, it's Brandon Despia. Damn. Regain Reborning Dispater is just like, what the heck? Why is that allowed? This should totally say non synchro. Doesn't Cash Tira Birth say non exceeds Cash Tira? We couldn't add that clause. Goodbye to the Mascarina. Super Polly in the battle phase. Get Fusion into the Furious Dragon. Serenir sending from the deck to the grave a branded opening. Okay, giving us the destruction protection, just from card effects, that is. Main phase two, Lubellion setting up a branded spell or trap card. The effect veiler will be negating. We have used up our normal summon, of course. Furious Dragon dodging the Effect Veiler, popping the Regained, and we're setting up what? Set up our Branded Lost Nadir Servant, sending the Garura to draw a card, adding Maximus from the Graveyard to the hand. Damn. Banish? And then, I mean, why aren't more people playing Maximus? I said this, send Albion, send Titanclad, special Quem, Set up with the Albion? It's disgusting. We are setting up the Branded in Red, and Titan Glad is summoning the Quem. Quem sending from the deck a Branded Fusion to copy with the duplication. Like, the. Every duel you watch of Branded Despia is different. That's why I like the deck. That's interesting. It's different. When have you seen this? Copy the Branded Fusion. Sending the puppet. <laughs> okay, this is where it gets toxic, okay? I don't condone using Branded Despia for this. I say use Branded Despia responsibly. Do not abuse it with the puppet. It's okay. You know, again, I blame the game, not the player. We're going to spin back. We're going to Albion, Sanctifier, and you are going to be completely locked out. I even take your dispater. <laughs> oh my gosh. What the heck? Ain't no way. All right, please finish him. Damn. Damn. We 
got Nibiru. And it can be stressful on how to Nibiru because you don't want to reveal that you have Nibiru with your toggle on auto or on. So you have to have your toggle on off. With your toggle on off, they're not gonna feel the Nibiru delay. So we are on summon number three. And what you could do is you could wait for Borload Savage Dragon. You could wait before they try to make a Chaos Ruler. Those are generally going to be when we Nibiru. If they feel the Nibiru, they're going to go right into the Heretic Seal. You don't want to tip them off. So this is when the field lights up. And, you know, the Serenir is messing things up here. But if we didn't have Serenir, it would light up here. And then they would just be like, okay, Heretic Seal. And you don't want to reveal that. You want them to further commit. You want them to Rocket Tracer pop, summon from the deck even, and then you could, that probably right then and there could be a good Nibiru to stop the Chaos Ruler. This Chaos Ruler could just turn into a bunch of pluses. It could be tributed for Lubellion, setting up regained, milling Chaos Space, milling Saferts. Do we really want that to happen? You see? That's how you do it. And maybe Abamod correctly toggled to make this happen. Or the Serenir kind of messed up the delays because there was probably a delay throughout the entire turn even before the five summons. Serenir banishing the recharger here. And Abamod in the chat himself, he claims that he did correctly hide the Nibiru delay. So you see, e even if you don't believe him, that is another player confirming that's what you should be doing. I do believe him though. I think he did. And how can you safely do it? If you set up your toggle, so right click is toggle off, left click is toggle on. So you could very quickly off, on, off, on. Cartesia getting Veilard here. Are we gonna call by the grave into imperm negating Cartesia? Ooh, dodge the finger by banishing your own Veiler, holding on to the impermanence. We talked about this earlier in the tournament. Very well done. You're only able to do it if your opponent controls an opposing monster to make this a quick effect. Very nice. The battle we go. Druid Swarm will be able to send a special one monster to the graveyard. We do not want that to happen. Setting up with Branded Sword, which uh, it really does not do too much. Banish Branded Spell Trap Cards to summon 2,500 attack tokens. But we also have the Daruma Karma Cannon. This is the anti-Link against Dragon Link. You have to send all your Link monsters to the graveyard if you can't flip them face down. So when do we do it? When do we do it? Chaos Angel will be flipped face down. Chaos Angel banishing the wrong card here. See, bluffing back row cards is still relevant in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. It's much less relevant as it used to be 10 years ago. All right, Jura Swarm goodbye to the Nibiru. We could hold on to that Daruma can and just commit. Wait for that commitment. And then, damn, Imperm again. Ooh, dodge the impermanence. Flip the field fuse. Okay, so this does work out. We're going to be going into the Gangrenol, yes? Gangrenol, Serenir trigger, Gangrenol trigger. And if you summon through a monster, through a monster effect, Gangrenol could turn into Quem. Quem could then reborn and Albash in the graveyard if we can get a card into our hand to discard. Getting the Albion into the graveyard plus a Retribution, searching for Branded Fusion, triggering Cartesia to add back to the hand because a Fusion monster was sent to the grave this turn. Retribution able to recycle any branded spell or trap in the graveyard. The Bellion get search, and I think this is the first time in weeks where I've seen branded Despia defeating Dragon Link. I, right? Am I right? I have not seen this happen. Albion banishing from the grave, come forth straight into the Mirror Jade, skipping the Lubellion because we have that fusion in the grave, banishing during the battle phase. And just like that, with the help of Serenir, more than enough damage for lethal. Exactly 8,000 against 6k. Very well done. Branded Despia defeating Dragon Link, advancing to the grand finale. Oh, well, Abba, okay, then Abomod's the first player I've seen beating Dragon Link. Full match. Because uh, he did defeat another Dragon Link previously in today's tournament. Hajime. 
Grand Finale. Long Yawn, discard. We now have a non-effect monster. We did not want to be using any of our other worm cards here. No 10 Yi effects. Normal summoning the Ecclesia, special summoning from the deck. Ash negate, but Baron to floor could negate the negate. Negate. Very well done. Now Baron to floor using up its hard. One small face up negate during the next standby phase could jump off the field to reborn a monster from the grave. We're gonna use Heavenly Dragon Circle to tribute off the Moe to search for a Protos. Locking a dark monster out of dark special summoning. Baron can't negate. We have no disruption. You just can't special summon dark. Damn. Now, what can we do? Nadir sending Garura. We're going to be drawing a card here. Maximus could also banish special summon. It is a light. Even if you deal with the Protoss or negate it, it's still making it so you can't special summon dark monsters. And we already locked ourselves out of the extra deck. That's fine. So maybe it's not too big of a deal after we deal with the Protoss. We are sending a Titan clad and an Albion. We can normal summon Albion. We just can't special summon it. Setting up a fusion duplication so that we can fuse during your turn. Now ending the turn, Albion adding from the deck a Branded in red as the Titan clad summons a Quem. Quem could send Branded fusion. <laughs> Damn. Use Branded Fusion before the Protoss is able to lock you out of dark. Very well done. Chaining the Maxi, unfortunately, we have no way to stop that play. Oh no, who saw the Puppet? Puppet in the graveyard. I'm gonna take the Maxi challenge if you just can't even special summon. Why not? Branded Lost gets searching. Lubellion get fusing. We're gonna be going into the Sanctifier Dragon here, very likely. Yes. Maximus and Albaz, Sanctifier Dragon, which cannot be targeted. This is all within the draw phase. To make this more balanced, it could have been only activatable in the main phase. But there's a called by the grave. But did we summon this on Chainlink 1? I think so. So we can't even respond with the call by the grave. Ain't no way. We can't stop it. Thanks to the Branded Lost, as we talked about, making Guardian Chimera. Yep, to my field and to your field, immediately applying the effect. You can't drop what's send to stop it. We have Guardian Chimera activating to wipe up a card on the field, plus draw two, right? We, uh, how many did we send from the hands of the grave? Draw two, pop one. Oh, Protoss is indestructible. Now we could still activate the Protoss. Could we banishment, fuse with it? Is there a play with that? No, the Albion and the Titan Clan cannot be summoned from the grave because they were not properly summoned. Baron to floor get popping, popping the banishment, dead banishment, Protoss declaring dark, wiping out all the dark monsters on the field, and even getting puppet locked, still making plays. Ain't no way. Protoss versus puppet. Let's go. All fields wipe, and we cannot special summon dark. Is it time? Did we make a mistake by not using Herald of the Abyss or what? I mean, we had it. Discarding Herald, fusing with the Protoss, making a Coritis. Now, we are going to be using Tragedy being sent to the graveyard and chaining Lost to grab an Albaz monster. Tragedy will be grabbing a Despia monster. The Despia monster being Quem or Alubur. Albion sending Retribution from the deck to the Graveyard to draw one card, and Retribution can now add any branded spell trap on the Graveyard back to our hand. Reducing the field to zero attack, wiping out the Taya with the Coritis, using the Retribution to recycle our Banishment. Now, Branded Fusion is banished, but you do have a way to go to it still. You could use your Kit. Kit could add it back, and uh, hey, you're right there, actually. Banishment, Reborn, the Sanctifier, repeat the Puppet Lock, Call by the Grave, stop all of that. I do not think so. Damn, a much needed Call by the Grave finger stopping the insanely toxic Puppet Lock, stopping them completely from even being able to special summon. We're going to be banishing the Adhara since we have a token with the Long Yun. Long Yun's going to be our level 10 Synchro. While we still have the token, a non-effect monster, we could use all our 10 Yi effects. Banishing a special summon of Vashuda. Vashuda can make a monk, then we can banish to return a card in the field back into the deck, making a Chang Ying. 
Now, Quiritus, if it leaves the field through a card effect, it will activate to summon an Albaz to fuse with the field. But there's a way to play around it. And that would be Vashuda, which just got banished by the Serenir. So by returning Quiritus back into the extra deck, it does not trigger. We're now going to be using Imperm onto the Chang Ying, stopping it from banishing a card on the field and in the grave. This is a crazy back and forth. We're going to use the Heavenly Dragon Circle to dodge the Impermanence. Thus, we will be able to banish a card on the field and in Grave. What are we banishing? Goodbye to the Coritus and the Alibur in the Graveyard, which would have triggered off of the Coritus being banished. And we're going to use Ash to negate the Coritus from summoning a monster from the deck, which could have been an Albaz, which could have discarded to fuse into a Mirror Jade with the Monk of Tenyi. Taya banishing the Emergence from the Graveyard, not activating its effect to make a level 7, making Baxia, which could spin two cards on the field. Also chaining the Taya to the Baxia to send a card from the deck to the Graveyard that we could reborn with the Baxia. Goodbye to the field, back in the deck, popping itself or the Monk, reborn the Mo Yi, reveal the Mo Yi to make a level 8 Synchro. 5,600 damage on the field that we need for lethal. And just like that, we have 51, not quite game. Mo Yi, draw a card, Grandmaster, search our deck. Have we long yawned yet? Where'd the long yawn at? We have Blackout. Is long yawns all gone? We're going to send the field to the graveyard for a Shaman of Ten Yi. Discard to reborn the Chang Ying, which should be enough for lethal damage. Ain't no way we sent Baxia and our Grandmaster to make a Shaman to reborn our Chang Ying for game. Holy moly. This is a match. This is a match. Alu Burr for the Branded Fusion. We have Max C, Call by the Grave to stop the Max C. Now, generally with this play, you would send Lubellion to then make Albion, to then send Albion for Lubellion. But it could be playing into a Bestial. So I'm curious to see, do we still go for that? Sending a Rinbrom from the extra deck to the graveyard and also grabbing an Albion here. Fingering that C, let's see what we send. Lubel and Albaz, right? Yes, we're still going for that. This is where the Albion could be responded to with a Bistial banishing the Albaz, which could be quite disruptive. Albion, the Shroud of Dragons, only considered a fallen Albaz while on the field or in the grave, so it could not have been used. Mercurior being banished, being triggered to add from our deck an Albaz monster, which will be the Cartesia, which could special summon for free by having the Albion shrouded in the graveyard being considered a fallen Albaz. Now making our Mirror Jade, come forth and special summon. Tribute, and now summon our Lubellion. Lubellion could set up a Branded Spell or Trap into the back row, which will be our Branded Lost. Then we use Cartesia to fuse with the Alibur to trigger the Branded Lost to, I would say, grab a Mercurier if you're playing a second copy. A lot of people were only playing one, but this is why I like two. Grabbing that second one. See, two is the way. Gangrenal sending the puppet from the deck to the graveyard. Oh my Jesus. And we also have Retribution. We're going to end phase, banish our Lubellion. Shouldn't we? Okay, we're supposed to summon Quem, then banish. We're going to summon Albaz, add the Cartesia and the graveyard back to the hand. Albion set up with banishment. Okay. Uh, that's quite interesting. Super Palmerization, discard Cartesia, fusing into the Albion, and on its summon, to its summon, you chain, give them the puppet, they can't call by, they can't Ash, they couldn't even max C. <laughs> Let's go. Can't, can't, you can't, you can't do anything. Nothing, no chain. Ain't no way. You'd have to, Hard draw, Cosmic Cyclone, player priority, activate it onto the Branded Lost. That's the only way. You need a quick effect to deal with the Branded Lost and player priority, activate it before the Super Poly. Now you can't special summon for the rest of the turn. That's it. Toxic, yes. We could have also turned player priority Max Seed, but uh, wasn't it fingered by the called by? It was, even, Max Seed was negated. Couldn't even do that. And, you know, they would chain Super Poly so you don't get a draw off of the Albion, but you do get the draw off of the Puppet. Retribution, recycling a Branded Fusion. And, you know, here's the thing where I'm wondering, was Puppet needed to win? We would have just 
had an alternative just as powerful board, you know, just not as just as powerful, but another powerful board that would have been very difficult to deal with, especially having the branded loss set up. So it, this is why it really feels like it's win more. It doesn't feel needed. It's a very good deck without the puppet. So maybe we could just ban it, ban puppet tonight. Well, sure, why not ban it, get rid of it? I think that will actually be on my prediction. Wipe it out, open field, over 13,000 damage on the field. Brandon Despia taking this to a game three. All right, we are mowing it up. Reveal, come forth and summon our token. Super Poly, the general thing about Super Poly is don't have two monsters with the same attribute on the field and you should be good, generally. A pretty decent hand. Max C, Imperm, Pot of D for more hand traps even? Ain't no way. We did not draw into more hand traps, unfortunately. So let's see what we can do here. Let's speed this up. Grandmaster will be able to negate any monster in the field. We got the Sinister Sovereign, which if they activate a card like Branded Lost, we could banish it. If they special summon, you could banish it. And we have Imperm to negate a monster. We have Grandmaster to negate a monster. And you got to deal with the Max C, which we don't have an out for yet. But Maxi will be turning on the Triple Tactics Thrust. Let's see. Not Maxi early. Cartesia into Imperm Negate. Chain Super Poly Mate. Cartesia plus the Grandmaster. That's the Gangrenol. But then we have to fuse again. But we don't have another valid fusion. This is where you should have to reveal your hand. But you don't have to because you gotta trust your opponent. Gangrenol sending the Garura activate to draw a card here. Oh, we got the TTT. Nadir sent Albion, grab the Maximus. We can't use the extra deck for the rest of the turn. Banish Garura, come forth and summon. Are you going to like use this thing? We're not like, is there a reason why we're not, I guess, huh? Okay, we're playing around TTT, right? We didn't want to, uh, yeah, I mean, didn't he add it? He added it but before he even added, but no, you didn't know that he had it. What did he add with the, the thing? Did he even thrust? There was no thrust. Did he even activate a monster effect? Oh my cheese, we just like didn't do anything. How does he know? Huh. All right, we're resolving the end phase. The Albion will be setting up a banishment. The Quem will be sending a card from the decks of the graveyard. This is all due to the Maximus off the Nadir Servant sending the Titan clad in the Albion. Very well done. He knows Amod runs three. You know, you could probably check the website and think that he probably didn't change his deck up that much. Very safe. Wow. That's incredible. Playing around Thrust and Talent. Huh. Ecclesia into Taya, triggering the Gangrenol to summon a monster from the deck or extra deck. This could be a Despia monster. It could be a Quem. It could be a Coritis. It's going to be Coritis, which could reduce the field to zero attack. Activating to banish it. Activating to reduce you to zero. This could summon an Albaz from the deck after being banished. Albaz could fuse with the Sinister Sovereign to make a Mirror Jade. We are under Maxi. Discard Fuse. So it's really interesting, and I do have to pause for this. Albaz, Branded, Despia, they love special summoning on your turn. If you maxi on their turn, you're playing into the thrust, you're playing into the talent. Is this really optimal? Just hold maxi, just don't even bother using it on their turn. Taya Banish for the Baxia. This is gonna be a double field spin, so we have to answer it right now. Banish it. Mo Yi Reveal to get that token again. Are we letting him double field spin? We're going to be using the Ten Yi Ashuna in the graveyard. Banish to summon a Vashuda from the deck. We're going to be summoning Albas from the graveyard with the effect of the Rinbrum. And we uh, we already used the Albas. Did we forget that? We already Albazed. Yeah, what the heck? Baxia spin the back row back into the deck. It's not that he made a mistake. There was really no other play here. Chain Banishment to summon the Quem. We are going to be fusing with the Albas, so this does work out. So while he already used Albaz, he's still using Albaz again with the Branded Banishment. So this was the correct play. Very well done. Now we already have a Mirror Jade. So what do we do? I think we make a Dragostapelia, right? Quem trigger, Lubellion trigger, 
discard to get Fusion. I mean, we're going to get Nibiru. <laughs> it's the opponent's turn, their turn, your Nibiru with the their turn special summoning. We could Nibiru. Now, the Mercurier could actually negate Nibiru while on the field. This is absolute insanity. Well, what is 10 cards in the hand? What are we doing? Baxia pop the back row, reborn the tie of Mercurier negates. Are we going to Nibiru? <laughs> okay, focus, focus. We already used the Mirror Jade. We do have the Sanctifier Dragon, which without the puppet, how good is it really? And with an already activated Albaz, again, how good is that? Just special summoning. The Cartesia, I guess, could be special summon. Maybe stealing a good monster from the opponent's graveyard. That's it. Time limit. <laughs> I'm like, you are not allowed to surrender. Just like that. Very well done from both players here. Under the maxi challenge during the opponent's turn. Draw after draw after draw. Using Albaz effect. Reborning Albaz. Then using it again with Banishment. Absolute insanity. Great show from both players here. Very well done. Sword Soul and Branded Despia. A year old matchup playing again after Branded Despia has evolved time and time again with new support. Sword Soul staying in the same spot. Still a great deck to play. Beautiful. We had almost 140 people in the, uh, I guess you could call this a Christmas tournament. Branded Despia, the most represented deck. And we were just talking about a banlist prediction, which there will probably be a banlist release by the time you're seeing this video, because it should be happening tonight, possibly. You know what? Actually, I really stand by the opening maybe going to one. The deck is maybe a little too good right now. Yeah, actually is too good. Probably. It, it, consistent performance across the board. Did really well in the Duelist Cup. Consistently doing well in tournaments. If I'm predicting that Dragon Link's going to get hit, then, you know, Despia should probably get hit also. But I, I did just, I think they make more money off branded Despia and Dragon Link's costing them. So that's why they would hit it harder. Not that I want it. And Monadium just uh, doing well randomly. I, I feel like people in pairs, they join the tournament with a deck together and they just both do well with it. It's wild. I can't believe it. So good job to you. Now, let's go to the bottom and let's check this out. Anderson Strife with Vanquish Soul. How can I predict no hits for this deck? Well, it's still in the shop. And when it does get hit, I think Borger to one would probably just be one of the hits. About half of the players, you know, 43% to be more precise, are playing Heavy Borger at three, but still some are playing at two. And I think, uh, you know, putting this to one would be a nice little wrist slap on them. Okay, and the deck is potentially gonna get power crept by more powerful decks like Rescue Ace coming, and even Fire King. So good job to you, Anderson Strife. And then we have Mayback. We unfortunately did not get to really see him cook that much. This is Bestial Runic, but adding in Orcist. A much more interesting way to play the deck. You have Hug In, discard the Horp Horror. What's unfortunate about having all these cards that you want to discard is, you know, Nightmare and Horp Horror, Horp Horror and the Skeleton to be uh, specifically on those cards. If you open up the Fountain, then you can't discard them with Hug In. So with the Fountain being limited to one, it, it does restrict the ways to play a deck like this. It really did hurt. Let's keep on going. We have Amidamaru. Amidamaru with some Cash Tira, always sneaking its way into the top cut here. I think this is probably the most basic way to play the deck, and it works. Triple Imperm, got room for the cross out. Called by, we even have two Forbidden Lance, two Pot of D. Damn, very well done. Good job to you. And then we have Plague Meister. Plague Meister with the Gimmick Puppet. 45 cards, not playing 60. 60, I believe, is more popular among the tournament decks here with Grass. And then you could add the Grass to the hand with the Thrust. Good job, Plague Master. And then we have Diavolo. Diavolo, more puppets. Puppet usage going. How do we go one week, no puppet? Next week, everyone's playing puppet. Is this a mood or what? So good job, Diavolo. And then there is the extra deck, anything too crazy. My opinion is I see this card a lot in the TCG side decks. I think in Master Duel, you should be main decking this card. I think it, it does too much to not be playing it. 
a, a full field negate, negate back row, negate floodgates. I can't, I can't see myself going on the ladder without this card. All right. Then Jin with Monadium, 40 card clean Monadium. I'm surprised you're only playing two Starfrost with how much the deck relies on it. And you got two Barrage, one Thorough Blade. Very interesting. Nice. There is the extra deck. All right. Good job to you. Happy to see it. Two Orcus decks doing well today. Pariah. Not playing Runic with it. We got DPE Orcus. We got a bunch of Bistials in here too. Very well done. Good job, Pariah. Any deck with Bistials are doing quite well. The Bistials are putting in work. Good job. And then we have Bear Bloom with no puppet, 60 cards. We don't have room for that puppet. And, you know, it does make the deck a bit more linear, focusing on the puppet lines among, instead of the other ones. But to be fair, though, you could just be choosing the same line. That's not a puppet one anyway. All right. Very nice. Good job. Keep on going on ba Bash. Bash with the Purely. Anything crazy here. I don't think the deck's going to get further hit. In fact, it's going to get more support. After the more support, Sleepy will probably start getting hit. Siljo, the other Monadium deck. The first one we saw was playing Zodiac. This one's playing more Cash Tira. I think so, right? Yeah, the, no, I think it's the same amount of Cash Tira between both. It's just a more pure deck with the Bistials. And then we have Net Virus with Dragon Link playing Sharnga. Sharnga, special summon if you have a 2,000 attack or more on the field, including your opponent's side. Very nice. Okay. Lemon with Purely. More Purely doing well. We had some Ghost Spell up in here instead of Droll Knockbird. And then we have Reveri. Reveri with Dragon Link, 60 card. We got the Chaos Emperor. Not everyone's playing that one. Not everyone's playing Black Metal Dragons to normal summon. Does compete with your safer. All right. You know, but it's a 60 card deck, to be fair. All right. There's the extra. We even got Small World in this deck. That is nice. That's something you don't really see. I don't think so. We have Buns with Zodiac Cash Tira. We have a ton of non engine. Max, Ghost Bell. Ash, Shifter, Imperm, Solemn Judgment, Droplet, Pot of D, Bistials, I would say. All right. Very nice. Good job, Bun. And we now have second place Abo Mod. One Curry Kara Divine Carnet. Why not? 60 card deck, one Curry Kara. You could draw into it. I'm really liking Maximus. Every time I see you use it, I like it. It's great. And what else is good here? Some branded Destiny players are not playing branded and white. I think that's kind of wild. Brand white is really good. They maybe feel like they're good with just branded and red and not need this, but I feel like for a lot of anti-ash lines, this is needed. We, there's the, everything else is good and clean. Two mirror jades, some people play one, okay. And then Sword Soul from left field out of freaking nowhere. Winning the whole damn tournament. This could very well be the only Sword Soul player that joined the event. And just like that, Protos got Nibiru surprise. Very well done. Good job, GOT, Mekey. These are the total decks. Thank you very much, and we are out.